Hey guys, Mr. Happy here and welcome to Final Fantasy Bestiary. This episode, we're going to be talking about the Mammal Jaw. Now, I've been wanting to do a video about them since week one of the Bestiary series when it was originally intended to only talk about creatures from within Final Fantasy XIV. I have, not, I have now gotten around to doing the video and I do hope that you enjoy learning about this very unique type of creature. Now, the Mammal Jaw were beastmen that were first featured in Final Fantasy XI's expansion, The Treasures of Ot Ergon, and they are found in the Mammal Jaw Savage Lands just east of the empire where the main game takes place now while they do have some varying characteristics you could pretty much identify any of them at a glance their common characteristics include their their lizard like humanoids that's their pretty much their most dominating feature and in fact their name even means brethren of the shining scale in their native tongue to further speak about their lizard like tendencies now they even have a horn like protrusion out of the top of their head which doesn't seem to serve any important purpose they have sharp claws and they strangely speak in a very yoda esque way placing their verbs at the end of their sentence structure now more importantly are the characteristics about within the subclasses of the mammal jaw now melee mammal jaw are usually brown skin while mages are blue skin so they have a sort of way of segregating themselves within their culture now furthermore they are split into four classes within their culture so they have warriors sages knights and aquatics aquatics being an interesting case that we're going to talk about now warriors can be pretty much any melee jo any melee job that's uh that's significant within their culture so thieves blue mages ninjas dragoons and beast masters are very common and are always brown skin sages are usually black mages or white mages and they are always blue skin knights are paladins that ride weave rays which are these giant rhino like creatures and they again are brown skin while the aquatics are actually very interesting aquatics are actually not mammal jaw at all they're actually sahagin that have allied with the mammal jaw so this kind of makes them an, an outsider to the race that's kind of just been accepted within the beastman ranks and they are usually bards and monks now they have some signature attacks, minus the Sahagins who have their own attacks, and we're going to get into those. There's only a few of them. Their first one is a somersault kick, which is a very flashy move. It's a single target move where they do a backflip, kicking the person in the process and knocking them back. Next, they have warm-up where they jump around and get their blood pumping, which increases their accuracy and evasion for a moderate time. Next is Fire Spit, which is a powerful single target fire breath attack. It's absorbed by shadows in Final Fantasy XI, and its strength varies between each of the Mammal Jaw subspecies. Rare Mammal Jaw have a variation of Fire Spit called Ground Burst, which is a very powerful AoE fire damage spell that breaks all sort of shadow type defenses. And each Mammal Jaw also has their own individual abilities based on their combat style, whether it's hand to hand, they have a weapon, they have a staff. It changes within their subspecies. Now, their behavior is very aggressive towards those who oppose their wrath, primarily supporters of the Ot Ergon Empire. Now, they do act independently of the other beast tribes, so despite being a very, a very calm and collected beastman race, they tend to act on their own, and they take these matters very seriously. They usually go into deep discussion before making any major movements within their ranks, and their government is often referred to as a Republican government. So, in this Republican government, they're ruled by four overlords primarily, and one for each subspecies. So there's the warriors that are led by Strife Lord Backled Jaw. There's the sages who are led by Sage Lord Mulal Jaw. There's the knights who are led by Lance Lord Gahil Jaw. The aquatics are led by Rattle Jaw, a very, very powerful Sahagin. Also, Gulol Jaja, who is known as the Autarch, is the leader of all the Mammal Jaw, even the four overlords. He gets the final say over everything. And he actually has two heads, both of which are capable of speaking out loud, and they each have a place on the council. Now, they were often a beast tribe, uh, beast tribe that was actually paying tribute to Ot Ergon. We don't know why they were paying tribute. It was likely for protection. And this was until Gulol Jaja took over. When he appeared, they began seeking uh, Ot Ergon's powerful relic known as the astral candescence which grants those who are in possession of it something known as astral wind enhancing their very lives in fact in final fantasy 11 whenever the empire was in possession of the astral candescence uh adventurers would gain several bonuses including enhanced sanction ranks and bonus experience as well as increased uh point acquisition now 
Since the beginning their assault for the Canaanites, they have never stopped trying to retrieve it. And this is likely due to its great power of enhancing the lives of all of those who have it. However, it may also be re related to some story elements, including the Empire's experimentation with the revival of Alexander. Now, that's all the details you really need about them from Final Fantasy XI. However, it is interesting to note that they have made an appearance in Final Fantasy XIV of Realm Reborn. They have appeared in a, with a small foothold in Lenosi and have become mercenaries for hire. They appear first after the Calamity, which is the event where Bahamut unleashed his power upon Eorzea five years prior, nearly destroying it. They retain most of their characteristics and behavior, as well as some similar but modified TP moves. All of the Mammal Jaya use three moves, Ground Burst, Spinning Kick, and Barbaric Surge. While Ground Burst is directly from Final Fantasy XI, Spinning Kick is a variation on Somersault Kick, which does AoE damage, and Barbaric Surge is a variation of Warm-Up that just increases their damage instead of their accuracy and evasion. Now, they seem to show special interest in the Arcanist guilds, and this means that they will likely be antagonists for the Arcanist class quests. Also, their in-game lore is quite interesting. Their in-game lore suggests that their origins are from an area similar to that of the Mammal Jaw Savage Land, around the Empire. Additionally, it is implied that the reason why they seek the power of the Arcanist Guild and the uh, the resources from being mercenaries is that they're seeking these resources and techniques necessary for invading the Empire and taking the Astral Candescence. This would mean that the Mammal Jaw are in fact the exact same race of those present in Final Fantasy XI, potentially signifying a tie between the two games, a direct tie at that. It's also possible that this was just provided as backstory as an easter egg for those of us who played Final Fantasy XI and recognize the race and are wondering why they're here. However, Yoshi P has stated while they may not have much of a presence yet, that they may have one in the future. And very interestingly enough, they were placed in Lenosi, which is where the Sahagin in Final Fantasy XIV are actually very, very present. So it may be possible that sort of the opposite is happening from Final Fantasy XI, where the Mammal Jaw had the Sahagin uh, ally with them, and now it seems that maybe the Sahagin have the Mammal Jaw allying with them. But we're just going to have to see how it plays out over time. I was just very glad to see that they are making a return in the game. They are one of the better looking and more interesting beastmen in my opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favorite, subscribe, and share. Also, follow me on Facebook and Twitter for regular video and streaming updates. And if you support, and if you want to support my YouTube channel, you can always donate directly to me. All proceeds go to equipment that can better my stream and give a better experience for everybody watching. If you don't like that, you can always donate to GamingForGood.net. They donate money to the Save the Children Foundation and is actually matched by the U.S. aid seven times, meaning that the donations are multiplied by eight, making every one dollar donation equal to eight dollars. Also, you get points and you can actually buy games with points that you get for donating money, so it's a pretty cool system. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about the Manual Jive and dying to do a video about them. Tune in next time when we go back to some of the more varied Final Fantasy characters. Until then, take care.